Now to some of the other races yesterday, and there's a nail biter in Kansas where Secretary of State Chris Kobach holds a razor thin lead over Governor Jeff Collier for the Republican gubernatorial nomination. Just 533 votes separating them. Collier served seven years as lieutenant governor and was elevated in January after President Trump made Governor Sam Brownback an ambassador. But Trump's endorsement of Kobach on Monday night has put him over the edge. According to the New York Times' Jonathan Martin, a private tracking poll found Kobach went from even in the race with Collier to up seven points after Trump weighed in. In Michigan, Republicans nominated another Trump-endorsed candidate, John James, for U.S. Senate. James faces an uphill battle against Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow. And in Washington's 8th District, Republican Dino Rossi advances in the race for an open Republican-held seat that Clinton won as Democrat Kim Schreier leads fellow Democrat Jason Ritterizer for what he uh, for who gets to head the general election. Steve Kornacki, um, a, a torts professor, uh, Professor Pearson, who would ask us a question, it would always be a setup, and you knew you were about to get run over. And he said, you should see the next question coming at you like a slow motion yeah. locomotive coming out of a tunnel, right at you. Well, you could, you could say the same about the Republican Party's fortune. In fact, we've all been talking about it for a year now, where you have a Donald Trump endorsement that helps somebody like Chris Kobach uh, possibly win uh, the Republican nomination, but then sets him up, sets the Republican Party up for a, a, a makes it more likely that they lose in the fall because of just well, what we saw in the Ohio race last night, the massive bleeding of Republicans and what was once, you know, Republican strong stronghold, the suburbs since the late 1960s have been where Republicans have gone to win elections. And now, you know, a Donald Trump endorsement of a candidate like Kobach, that repels so many people in, in those once solidly Republican areas. So, you know, uh, a win in September or a win in August possibly leads to a big loss in the fall. That is certainly the th it, it was so striking. You had that Trump endorsement of Kobach in, in a couple of hours later on Monday, right before the election. Mr. Kansas Republican politics, Bob Dole, 95 years old now, weighs in uh, with an endorsement of Kobach's opponent, the uh, the acting governor. So that was sort of the establishment speaking in response to Donald Trump making that move. I will say the interesting thing when you put those results up right now, where Kobach still clinging to that lead of just over 500 votes, is one county, one giant. County, one giant suburban upscale, more affluent county, Johnson County, you go Overland Park, Kansas, for instance, right outside Kansas City. That's where the outstanding votes have been now for, I'm going to say, the last eight hours. Basically, everything's from Johnson County. When Johnson County was completely outstanding at about midnight, everybody's assumption was, that's it. Now Collier's going to win this nomination because Kobach's not going to win in these suburbs. Now about two-thirds of Johnson County has been counted overnight. And Kobach continues to lead. Those suburbs have not, strangely enough, come through for Collier the way they were expected to overnight. So certainly, I think it's true. Mm. Kobach in, in November, if you're a Democrat, you're saying, oh, my goodness, this is a golden opportunity to win if Kobach's the Republican nominee. But those suburbs that are supposed to be endangered, the Republicans voting there, maybe no, I'm not seeing it that way quite as much. Yeah, you know, Willie, uh, Kobach winning, if he ends up winning, is, I mean, it's like Claire McCaskill trying to draw Todd Aiken uh, mm. back the last time she ran. And you never know how it turns out. Uh, Kobach may be different than Todd Aiken when he gets out on the campaign trail and may do much, much better. But just generally, you, you do have uh, Trump candidates, people who are embracing Donald Trump, setting themselves up for a much bigger fall come November. Well, there's a reason the Republican Governors Association and other national Republicans pleaded with President Trump not to endorse, endorse Chris Kobach. In fact, many of his own advisors reporting in the New York Times on Monday pleaded with him not to endorse Chris Kobach for the very reason you've laid out there, that 
polling shows that he is not a good candidate for Republicans and Democrats could then not only win back the, the governor's mansion in Kansas, but also energize Democrats to come out and vote in the House races in Kansas down ballot uh, to vote against Chris Kobach. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.